Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Ninja Foodi 2 Basket Air Fryer. I'll tell you about the different features of this unit and cook meat, potatoes, and frozen food. If you want to get this Ninja, click on the link right below this video. With regular air fryers, you can only cook one type of food at a time. With this Ninja, you can cook two foods at the same time, since there are two separate baskets. I believe it is the only air fryer out there with two baskets. The unit measures 15.6 inches long, 13.8 inches wide, and 12.4 inches in height. It weighs 17.8 pounds. The cord length is 2.6 feet. The air fryer is 1690 watts and BPA free. Included is a quick start guide. There's a cooking chart for vegetables, poultry, seafood, the amount, how to prep, amount of oil, temperature and time. There are also 15 recipes, like tortellini alfredo bacon roasted garlic broccoli, air fryer donuts, roasted salmon and parmesan asparagus, and bacon wrap pork chops with quinoa. There's also a full instruction manual, which I know nobody likes to read, that's why I give you so much information. The unit comes with two baskets that are non-stick, and two crisper plates that are also non-stick. Each basket holds four quarts, There are two independent zones so you can cook at different temperatures and times for each basket. Also make sure the air intake vent on top and air outlet in the back are not covered. The control panel has six customizable programs. Air broil, that's for finishing light melting cheese on top. The maximum time you can set is 30 minutes. Air fry, lets you cook food with little oil and you'll get a crispy texture. The maximum time for that is one hour. Roast. It's just like a standard oven, you can roast meats, and the maximum time you can set is 4 hours. Reheat to warm up leftovers, and the maximum time is 1 hour. Dehydrate, you can do meats, fruits and vegetables, the maximum time is 12 hours. You'd place a single layer of the ingredient in the basket, then the crisper plate on top, and another layer on the plate. Bake, good for cake and desserts, and a maximum of 4 hours. Things like the tortellini recipe from the quick start guide can be baked directly in the basket and you don't need to use the crisper plate. Power to turn the unit off and on and to stop all cooking functions. One is for the left basket and two is for the right basket. Choose one or two, select the function. To adjust the temperature, use the up and down arrows. Set the time using the up and down arrows here. Start pause to start cooking. Or pause during cooking. Smart Finish syncs the cooking times so both zones can finish at the same time. Press the power button. Zone 1 is the default and that'll be lit up. Select the function. I'm going to select air fry. Leave the temperature as 390. Time 20 minutes. Then select zone 2. That'll light up. Function temperature, let's say it's 400 and the time is 15 minutes. Choose Smart Finish and press Start. You see the zone with the shorter cook time will display Hold. Since I've set this side for 20 and this side for 15, after 5 minutes this side is going to start cooking and then they'll finish cooking at the same time. Match cook matches the time and temp of the first zone to the second one. So if you want to make a large batch of fries or cook different foods with the same function, time, and temp, this is what you would use. So for zone one, if I choose roast, 375, and the time is 20 minutes, press match cook and it'll just add the same time and temperature to the second zone. When you press pause, it's going to pause both zones. If you just want to pause one zone, press the zone and then hit pause. Air broil is not available when you're using match cook or smart finish. You can only air broil in one zone. You can also manually program each zone to start at the same time. Press the function, the time, second zone, function, 
and time. I like to manually program the time and temperature, especially when I'm making frozen food. Because with frozen food, it's best to start cooking right away and not let food be left in the basket waiting for a few minutes for it to start cooking. To end the cook time in one zone, select the zone, the down time arrow, and press till it gets to zero. Then end is going to be displayed. Cooking is going to continue in the other zone. Whenever you press a function, the default temperature is going to be displayed. There are stickers on either side of the unit with cooking times and temperature for popular foods. So you don't have to look it up in the manual each time. You can cook in both baskets at the same time or just one basket, zone one or zone two. The cooking time will vary if you're using one zone or both zones. For example, if you're cooking broccoli, the single zone would be 8 to 10 minutes and dual zone would be 15 to 17 minutes. For a pound of french fries that are thick cut, single zone would be 19 to 24 minutes and dual zone would be 35 to 40 minutes. I've got potatoes peeled and cut up to make fries. They've been sitting in water for 30 minutes. I'm also going to make pork chops. These are boneless and I've put them in salt water so they'll be juicy. It is best to put them in brine because they tend to dry out quickly. To my plain breadcrumbs, I'll add salt, oregano, rosemary, thyme, mix it up. To another plate, add all-purpose flour and ground black pepper. Crack an egg, little salt and pepper, Whisk that up, take the pork chops out of the brine, and put them on a paper towel lined plate. Pat them dry, sprinkle garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, rub the seasonings into the meat, turn over and season the other side. Dip each chop into the flour, then the egg, Let the excess drip off and then the breadcrumbs. Both baskets have the crisper plates in them. I'll put the chops in one basket. Four small chops will fit in a single layer. Slide the basket into the left side of the unit. The potatoes go into the second basket. I'm cooking one pound of cut-up potatoes. I've patted them dry and tossed them with one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Slide that into the right side. Press power. One is illuminated. I'll choose air fry. Set the temperature to 390 degrees and the time to 15 minutes. Press two. Air fry. Temperature is 390 and time is 20 minutes for the fries. Press start. When cooking, make sure there's about 6 inches of space on all sides for air circulation. Like most air fryers, this unit sounds like a loud fan. I'll press pause so I can turn over the chops and shake the fries. It's best to do this with most things you air fry. I'm using silicone tip tongs that's not going to scratch the surface. The breadcrumbs look pale because I didn't brush them with any oil. I'll brush the other side with a little oil. You don't have to, but that little bit of oil will give the chops a golden brown color. Put the chops back in, shake the fries up, and press start to resume cooking. The chops are done. The fries will continue to cook. Take the chops basket out. Press pause, shake the fries, and press start. If you're cooking something for a long time, it's recommended that you shake whatever's inside two or three times. The temperature is 165 and 170 degrees for the chops. The current guidelines say to cook pork chops to 145 for rare to 160 for well done. So if you like it at 145, Check the chops at 12 minutes. I used boneless chops that are not thick, so they cook quickly. The breading is crispy, 
The meat is juicy and not dried out, although the temperature was above the recommended 160 for well done. Definitely brine boneless chops. It's the key to keeping them juicy. The fries are done, cool will be displayed, and then end. They are cooked, but most are not crispy. I'll cook them for five more minutes. I'm cooking more fries in the first basket. That's why the timer's running. Five minutes are up and the fries look more golden now and they are crispier. So 25 minutes is good for fries. I'm gonna air fry frozen tater tots and frozen onion rings. The tater tots are supposed to be cooked at 450 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. And the onion rings are 425 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes for half a bag. According to the manual, the onion rings are supposed to be cooked at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 13 to 16 minutes. And the tater tots at the same 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 22 minutes. I'll put the onion rings in the first basket. I'm putting in half the bag and it'll fill half the basket. The tater tots, half the bag. If you're using a standard oven recipe, reduce the temperature by 25 degrees because this is like a convection oven that circulates hot air. 13 minutes for onion rings, 20 minutes for tater tots. I hit pause, it's for both zones. You can use silicone tip tongs to flip the food, or you can just shake the basket, depending on what's inside. Hit pause again to start cooking. together a bit. But they're crunchy. And cook. During cooking the basket will get very hot. So use an oven mitt and place it on a heat proof surface. They're very crunchy and cook perfectly. They're not greasy at all. If you want to get this ninja, click on the link right below this video. I'll show you some other things that I've cooked in this ninja. I'm reheating fried chicken and yes, it's Popeyes. I use the reheat function at 350 degrees and set the time to 15 minutes. After seven minutes, the internal temperature was already at 125 degrees. I moved all the chicken to one basket and added fries and biscuits to the other basket. Seven more minutes and everything was hot and crispy. When I reheated my average toaster oven, not high end, it takes longer and the inside of the chicken is never as hot. Here I'm toasting frozen waffles using the air fry function at 400 degrees for three minutes. I turned them over and cooked for two more minutes. They were perfectly cooked. Really quick breakfast with homemade blueberry sauce. You can also heat up other frozen breakfast items and make toast. These are frozen breaded fish fillets. Air fry function at 400 degrees and 10 minutes per side. Sorry, I don't have a finished picture, but they were golden brown and crispy. In my toaster oven, these would have taken 30 minutes instead of 20. I could have actually pulled them at around 16 minutes, but I like them really toasty. To clean, press the power button to turn off the unit. Unplug and wait for it to cool. Wipe the unit with a damp cloth and dry. The crisper plates are dishwasher safe or hand wash. The baskets are dishwasher safe, but hand washing is recommended. If there is stuck on food, soak the baskets and plates in warm soapy water. 
I hand washed the plates and the baskets and they were not difficult to wash. I didn't have any stuck on food, so it was easy to wash. If you do have stuck on food, soak the baskets and plates in warm soapy water. Although this unit is very large and takes up a lot of counter space, it does serve a purpose. You can actually cook a meal for four people in this unit. It's definitely a time saver because it cooks faster than a standard oven and some toaster ovens. It's also handy if you don't have an oven or if it's a really hot day and you don't want to turn on the oven. If you want to get this ninja, click on the link right below this video. As always, I hope you liked this review and found it helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you want to get notifications when I upload a new video, click on the bell icon and select all and turn on your notifications. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.